Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm gonna share the data that I collected as I upgraded my dust collection system. I went from a one horsepower shop box dust collector to this two horsepower Harbor Freight. Tons of videos on YouTube of woodworkers upgrading to this two horsepower Harbor Freight and then adding the filters, the cyclone, PVC pipes, things like that. There's only a handful of videos though that are pulling data at various points. And I think that's very important because everything needs to be data driven. You need to know what you're getting into if you're gonna upgrade a system or not, because this isn't cheap. The filters are hundreds of dollars, the cyclones are hundreds of dollars, the PVC is hundreds of dollars. So if you're content with your one horsepower dust collector, hopefully watching this video and the data I can provide might influence you to just stick with what you have or instead of upgrading to a new system, focusing on upgrading the system you have. So let's talk about data collection. I use this anemometer to pull all my readings, right? So there's a bunch of videos out there where it shows individuals that program theirs for the diameter of the pipe where they're pulling the reading and that'll produce CFM. I didn't feel like doing that. And plus the cheap one that I bought didn't give me the capability to program it for that. So I combated this by pulling all of my data from the same 90 degree elbow. So as long as this intake is consistent for all of my readings, I don't need to program it. That's a variable that we don't need to worry about. And then in terms of the airspeed, I'm just using miles per hour because that's the default setting on this. I also made this handy little jig with these two screws and 90 degrees that gives me consistent standoff and it prevents me from twisting or holding the reader closer to the intake. I'm not interested in comparing you know, what this Harbor Freight CFM is pulling compared to what the manufacturer says it will. That doesn't matter. What I care about is what is it doing right now in my shop? What does it do when I add this upgrade? What does it do when I add this pipe? So as long as I'm pulling the data from that same 90 degree elbow and it's in miles per hour, there's no variables there. I can compare that mile per hour reading to subsequent and previous readings and compare the data in terms of percentage of increased performance, percentage of decreased performance. At the end of the video, I'm going to have all this data broken down on a chart so you can see it and make your own decision whether to keep your current system or upgrade to a new one. Here you can see what my old shop looked like with the one horsepower shop box. I really only had it hooked up to the planer. I didn't have any other dedicated dust collection system set up, nothing on the table saw. Sometimes I would run it to the band saw, but I'd be tripping over the hose all the time. Nothing to the drill presses or mortisers, nothing to the miter saw. Dust was just all over the place. I hated it. I hated being out there working on projects. So I knew when I was moving to this new house, it'd be a great opportunity to halt production for a little bit on any other projects and really take the time to install PVC drop downs and dedicated dust collection to all the major tools in the shop. All right, here's the one horsepower shop Fox. It's going for 500 bucks right now. That's over double the cost of the Harbor Freight one. The Harbor Freight is a two horsepower, so double the horsepower. And it's going for 250 right now. But when I bought it, I was able to get it for 207. So here side by side, you can see the Harbor Freight one is much, much bigger. If you're in a smaller shop, then this is definitely something to consider. Also, when handling it, the Harbor Freight one is definitely much cheaper. It's thin metal, really flimsy. It flexes a lot, especially around that main drum. Here's just a shot of the jig that I'm going to be using on the anemometer to reduce some human error when I'm pulling the readings. First up is going to be the Harbor Freight stock. No changes or modifications, just fresh out the box and I'm pulling 37.1. Next up is the one horsepower shop Fox. It ends up pulling 36, which I was pretty surprised because it's a one horsepower. The Harbor Freight was two horsepower and that pulled 37.1. So they were pretty close in their stock form. The first modification I'm gonna do is add this uh, when Merv 15 canister filter. A lot of reviews on this on YouTube. It's got more surface area with the pleats, which allows more airflow. 
and therefore should increase the overall performance because it's allowing more air to exit. More air can exit means more air can go in through the intake. So it comes with these little hooks. It was pretty easy to install. You just got to drill some holes in the side of the drum there and then it mounts pretty easily. Now that I've got that all installed, here's what it looks like. We're gonna do another reading. Remember that first one was 37.1, so we're gonna see what kind of increased performance we get by adding this canister filter. And there you go, 42.9. So by adding that filter, we have a 15.6% increase in performance. And I'll be honest, at this point, after seeing how close they were on that initial stock test, and the size difference, I almost regret buying the Harbor Freight one. I should have just stuck with the Shop Fox and then threw a canister filter on that. And I'm sure I would have experienced the same 15.6% increase in performance. But at this point, I'm committed to this video and this experiment. So we're going to push with the upgrades and continue pulling data. The next upgrade we're going to do is this Super Dust Deputy 5 inch Cyclone. So quite a bit of time has passed here. I've gotten a lot done in the shop. I've severely modified the Harbor Freight Dust Collector. I've moved stuff around. I mounted it up on the wall. I've got the canister on it. I've got the five inch cyclone on it. You see I have dedicated PVC drop downs to all the major tools. I have the aluminum blast gates that I wired up limit switches to so that when I open the blast gate, it turns the dust collector on. And when I close it, it turns it off, which is pretty sweet. I'm glad I took the time to do that because it's just been awesome and i'm super happy with it unfortunately adding a cyclone induces a lot of friction to the system so we experienced a 31.2 percent decrease in performance which sucks but i knew it was going to happen this next reading is from one of the closest ports so it's now going through 18 feet of pipe 245s and a 90 degree so that's going to introduce another 13.5 percent decrease in performance so I'm pulling this reading from the furthest port I have in the shop. This wraps all the way around and it goes to my drill presses. So it's going through 61 feet of pipe, 245s, 390s, and that's an additional 15.6% decrease in performance. So at this point, I've been using the dust collector quite a bit, working on projects in my shop. The cyclone is not going to separate all of the dust especially the fine stuff so i wanted to go in give it a real quick cleaning hit it with the leaf blower brush it off and then pull some more data to see how much a clean filter improves efficiency so here we are back at the drill press which is my furthest port and with a clean filter, you can see that it actually increased by 13.4%. I'm going to go back to that uh, first reading I did, which was at my bandsaw. And, you know, similar, it increased it by 10.5%. So you can see, clean your filters, it'll suck more. All right, so when we look at this chart, it breaks everything down. Starting at the top, we have the stock one horsepower shop fox pulling 36 and then the stock two horsepower Harbor Freight pull in 37.1. I was really surprised by this. I thought the Harbor Freight was gonna pull a lot more or the Shop Fox would pull a lot less. You know, I almost wish I never bought the Harbor Freight and I just stuck with the Shop Fox. So if you've got a one horsepower Shop Fox and you're thinking about upgrading to the Harbor Freight, hopefully this data can provide some insight. You know, maybe you decide to stick with the Shop Fox and you just buy a canister filter for it. That's what I would do if I can go back in time. By throwing the canister filter on there, we experienced a 15.6% increase in efficiency. So we went from 37.1 to 42.9. We threw the cyclone on there and that was a big hit. It decreased by 31.2%. So we went from 42.9 down to 29.5 and that's reading directly from the machine. After traveling through 18 feet of PVC pipe, two 45 degree bends and a 90 degree bend at my bandsaw station, it went from 29.5 to 25.5. So we lost four and that's a 13.5% decrease. Similarly, I go to the far end of my shop, I'm pulling from my drill press, which total is now 61 feet of pipe, 
245s and 390s. It drops by an additional four. And so that's a 15.6% decrease when you compare it to the bandsaw location. So then I went and I took the bag off the bottom. I cleaned out the filters as best I could with a leaf blower and brush. And I did another reading from the drill press location and we gained 13.4% when you compare the original dirty filter 21.5 to the clean filter 24.4. You know, the clean filter increased efficiency by 13.4%. Similarly, at the bandsaw location, it increased it by 10.5%. Now, when you look at the cost, I paid 207 for the Harbor Freight dust collector. The filter was 256, including shipping and tax, and the cyclone was 181, including shipping and tax. So that's a grand total of 645 for the Harbor Freight setup that you saw here. I hope you guys found this information useful and it wasn't a complete waste of my time. If you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the comments below. I'm happy to help any way I can. If y'all are interested in seeing how I wired up those limit switches, on the blast gates. Let me know if there's enough interest. I can make a video on how I did that. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys.